What's up guys, it is your boy Bernardo from the BTNHD and yes, I'm finally going to do my review on Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 tablet third generation. So let's get to it. Okay, so the main focus on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 third generation tablet is for business individuals. Uh, it has the specifications, it has the power, it's extremely portable. Uh, this particular unit that Lenovo sent me, I'm going to show you guys the specifications. So we are going to right click on the taskbar, go to task manager, and within task manager, let's open up the task manager up a little bit, go to performance. And as you can see, we have quad core processor i7-8650U. Now this is the eighth generation processor with a clock speed of 1.90 gigahertz. You are able to go inside the BIOS and enable turbo and it's going to max it out to 2.11 gigahertz. That's not that bad. Now for memory, this particular unit has 16 gigs. Uh, within the Lenovo site, you can get it with eight gigs or 16 gigs. I was lucky enough to get the 16 gig model. Uh, the only thing about this particular ThinkPad X1 third generation is that uh, you're stuck with 8 gigs or 16 gigs. That's it. It's onboard memory, so you can't open it up and upgrade it. So make sure you purchase the particular unit that you want. Now for hard drive space, this guy comes with a Samsung 512 gigabyte solid state drive. Now for the graphics card, it comes with the Intel Ultra HD Graphics 620. And the display resolution is amazing. I think the resolution is about 3000 by 2000. Uh, the display is 13.0 inches, Quad HD. It is IPS and it is Gorilla Glass 4. Really strong, extremely durable. The only problem that I found with the glass itself is that it catches a lot of fingerprints. You gotta constantly wipe it clean. Uh, if you're one of those individuals that like to have their display clean, if you're using the multi-touch a lot, you're definitely gonna get that dirtiness on the machine. Now for security, uh, this machine is built for us IT admins to provide our users and still be secure. It does have Intel V Pro technology, which allows us to remotely manage the device as well as TPM. Uh, TPM is great, it's trusted platform module that kind of encrypts the hardware so malware doesn't affect it. Great thing to have. Uh, you do have Windows Hello as well as your fingerprint scanner right here. Extremely useful and is an additional layer of security for the device to lock it down. The device itself is extremely light to carry. Uh, the tablet only is going to weigh about 1.96 pounds. If you have the keyboard attached to it, it's going to be around 2.8 pounds, but it's still light to me. Uh, again, I think Lenovo's main focus for the X1 tablet was for business individuals that are traveling. They need something powerful, they need something strong, something that they can rely on. The tablet X1 is the one that you definitely need to look up. Okay, so one of the major areas that I'm constantly using on tablets or laptops or anything is the keyboard and the trackpad. And another cool thing about this particular machine is the kickstand. So let's start with the keyboard. First things first, I love the keyboard. Their keyboard was awesome to the point that uh, the spaces between each key is, I would say, if you take a nickel and a dime and you put it in between, that's basically the distance that you're going to have. But typing was amazing. Uh, I'm able to type extremely fast without making any mistakes. Uh, it's not like the keys are bunched up. I love the feeling of the keys itself. It has that nice texture. They raised up. They're not completely flat on the keyboard. A huge plus for me. The keyboard itself is backlit, uh, which is another great thing, especially if you like to work you know, at night in the dark. The trackpad... Um, I don't know, the trackpad was okay for me. Uh, it, it does have good distance. It's large enough for you to do what you need to do. I did find sometimes it kind of stopped on me. Uh, it hesitated. Uh, it, it wasn't really responsive. And the only way that I got around it was taking off the keyboard from the tablet and reestablishing the connection and, you know, the trackpad came back to life. Now, for... The kickstand itself, I really feel like the tablet and the kickstand is awesome for those designers. 
I do love the fact that Lenovo redesigned the kickstand to the point that you can take it all the way down. This allows me to, if I'm using Photoshop or Illustrator, to actually get in there with the active pen and have no problems. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like the fact that they redesigned the hinge. It's pretty sturdy, pretty strong. I don't see myself like wearing out the hinges, but you never know. It really depends on how much you're constantly bending it, you know, like this. But I mean, it's it's sturdy. All right, so I spoke to you guys uh, a little earlier about the display. The display is a beautiful 13.0 Quad HD uh, with a resolution of 3000 by 2000. And it's IPS with Gorilla Glass 4 technology, right? Now it does support 4K, meaning uh, I was able to hook up my external BenQ 4K monitor using one of the Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports that it has. And uh, it was great, clean, I had no issues, especially when I was dealing with like Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, I was able to see everything clear. Now within my unboxing slash first impressions, one of you guys mentioned about a PWM test on the display. I was able to do that with the particular settings on my iPhone. And I didn't see any distortion or any blur or anything that deals with the WPM. Uh, it's, it's pretty legit. Now the only problem that I received on this particular device, and I'm not blaming Lenovo, I am blaming Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft, uh, you know, apparently this machine didn't fully update to Windows version 1803, and I was the lucky one to get 1803 on this machine, and something happened. Uh, the resolution was locked on 3000 by 200. I wasn't able to downgrade it, and everything was just acting really funny. Keyboard, the trackpad, even the display was giving me so much problems. Uh, what I had to do to fix the problem was I had to upgrade the drivers, the Intel drivers, onto the operating system for it to work correctly. Because it looks like the Windows 1803 update removed the Intel drivers and it just caused a lot of problems. All right, now for the Active Pen. I had a YouTuber, hopefully, they're a subscriber that asked the question How's the Active Pen? Uh, does it jitter? Is it accurate? All that good stuff. Now, I'm not a professional individual to tell you that, you know, after pen is awesome, but from my experience using it, it's pretty legit. I was pretty satisfied how it handles with the X1 tablet, third generation. For battery life, uh, Lenovo advertised about 156 hours. I've had and changed the battery once, and it's been rocking and rolling for a full week with no problem. Now, I do say that if you're constantly using it, it's going to drain real fast, but if you're using it lightly, it's going to last for a while. Now, I have Photoshop. I have my favorite character, Luffy, from One Piece. I'm going to zoom in to his hair. I'm going to go to background, and I am going to change the opacity. There it goes, and let's change it to layer 2. I'm going to make sure my pen is active, and I'm just going to draw real quick or trace. Now the accuracy on this guy is pretty dead on. Now if you take your time, you are able to get some nice strokes. I do see illustrators, designers, uh, people that use Photoshop, edit photos, uh, create cartoons or whatever using the active pen with no issues with the ThinkPad X1. You gotta understand with the specifications with the X1, you're able to do a lot with this machine. Right now I'm just tracing it. Individuals that are inside those fields of designing, illustration, and drawing, I, I find myself um, purchasing this for them. Like for my marketing people, I would definitely get this for them, but they are Mac individuals, so most likely I can't do that. But if I do have like a PC person in the marketing group that needs something like this on the fly, I would definitely, definitely get it for them. No problems at all. Look at that. Oh, cool. Now, another thing I like about the Active Pen and the X1 uh, tablet is this little guy here. Uh, I'm super excited and happy that Lenovo did not uh, create this pen holder and insert it in a, a USB because that's what they used to do on the X1 tablets. They had this little mechanism here that allows you to hook up the Active Pen and then you had to put it inside a USB, eliminating a USB that I could use anytime. But what they did was they got smart and they created this new slot that allows you to insert the pen holder and uh, you're good to go. 
allowing you to use all your ports with no problem. Now, one of the things I do not like about the ThinkPad X1 tablet, third generation from Lenovo, is the following, the lack of ports. Uh, because if we take a look at the tablet, on your right hand side, we have your power button. Uh, right in the bottom, we have our volume control. And then we have our active pen pen slot, which allows us to put our pen holder mechanism right there. All right, that's pretty cool. On the other side, we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. One of the ports allows you to hook up your power adapter. And then we also have a micro SD slash nano SIM slot. And all the way in the bottom, we have our hybrid audio jack, which allows you to hook up your headphone slash mic. Now, why I'm disappointed about the lack of ports is because it does not come with either a 2.0 or 3.0 USB. That means I'm forced to purchase or upgrade my external hard drives to a type C connection. And that sucks to me. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's the only thing I really don't like about the ports. Now, throughout this entire review that I've been doing with you guys, uh, seriously, this device does get warm. It gets warm around this little particular area. Uh, I'm assuming that the battery compartment is located around here. This is why it gets extremely warm. Uh, if you're wondering about noise, I don't know if my ears or I'm getting deaf or whatever. I didn't hear too much noise. I did hear uh, a little bit of fan noise around this area. When I was testing out the battery using PC Mark 8, it did do, you know, like it went up and then it went down. But during my testing, when I took it home and all that stuff, playing around with the pen, I didn't hear too much noise. Only problem is, is heating. And the heating is normally around this little area right here. Now, one of the things that I always do for you guys, and that's the battery test. You got to understand, for us, we don't want to be tied down, hooking our devices to a power adapter and just staying there. We want to be mobile. These machines are created to be mobile, right? Uh, for the X1 tablet, third generation, I was super disappointed on the battery life. Now, for my first test, I ran PC Mark 8, like I always do, and it gave it two hours and six minutes. On my second test, uh, I only got two hours and 19 minutes. And on my last test uh, with PC Mark 8, it gave it two hours and 22 minutes. Now, I took it home, I was using it constantly with no problem. I got maybe between three and a half hours. I also ran a built-in Windows uh, command, which allows you to test out the battery. Even the Windows command gives it uh, a good amount of two hours and 46 minutes. And these are the times right here, which is extremely low. I just, I can't, it's just too low for me. Uh, the highest that Windows gave it was about 2 hours and 53. I was able to stretch it out to maybe three and a half hours, but it really depends on how you're using the device. If you're constantly using it, watching videos, the battery will drain. So you're probably saying to yourself, did you use it with or without the keyboard? Yes, I tried with the keyboard and without the keyboard because when the keyboard is plugged into the device, that is grabbing some of the juice, right? Uh, I was still able to get between three and three and a half hours. If you, you could probably stretch it a little bit more to maybe four hours, but to me, that's extremely low for this particular device. All right, guys, so let's conclude our review on the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet third generation. Now, one of the cool things that Lenovo did with this particular device uh, that they removed modules. Uh, on Gen 2, they used to have like a module to extend your battery, uh, for webcam and all that other stuff with generation 3 they kind of remove the modules You don't have to deal with all that, you know Inserting stuff to get more power into it. The machine itself does have power The only thing I don't like about the machine is the lack of ports. I do miss having a 3.0 or 2.0 USB port I'm forced to purchase devices uh, that support a type C port um, another thing that I do not like about it is that when it upgraded to the latest version of Windows 1803, I had a lot of problems with the display. I had to upgrade my Intel driver. My brightness wasn't working correctly. I was stuck on 3000 by 2000 resolution. Don't get me wrong, that resolution is great, but sometimes I want to downgrade it 
because certain things don't look right with high resolution. It does have two webcams, one in the front and one in the rear. The front one is a 2.0 megapixel, while the rear one is 8.0 megapixel. Uh, the camera itself works with no problem. Uh, I do enjoy using it definitely if you're doing Zoom calls, go to meeting calls, what's up, and hit no for that. Extremely clear, it looks great with the 3000 by 2000 resolution. I love that. Uh, when I was doing Zoom calls or GoToMeeting calls or GoToWebinars, no issues with that. Now, if you're wondering about the price, uh, the price is pretty steep. Starting price right now, if we go to the Lenovo site, they're advertising it for $1,269. And that's just the basic stuff. So let's take a look at the current models. They only have three current models within the Lenovo site. Uh, the first one is a 1269, which is the base. That's going to only give you the i5-8250U processor with only, let's see, how many gigs? 8 gigs of memory on board. If you want to bump up your memory, you want to get that 16 gig memory, which I have, it's 2132. I mean, the price itself is extremely expensive. I don't see uh, a regular consumer purchasing this. Now, if you're a regular consumer that's dealing with illustration, design, Photoshop, you need to edit like high quality photos on the fly. I would definitely say get this. Now, one of the bad things about this particular machine is the battery. The battery life sucks, like extremely sucks. Between three and three and a half hours, it's horrible. You know, I, I, for, that, for this price, you would think you would get maybe five to seven hours of battery life. Only getting three, three and a half, that's not good. Now for the Active Pen is a plus. One less thing that I have to purchase uh, I think after pens are around seventy to eighty dollars. Uh, for my experience using it with Photoshop and maybe Illustrator, it was super accurate. I didn't have any issues. Uh, no jitter, no nothing. It was really good. The battery life lasts for a long time. Like I said before, Lenovo is advertising that the battery life on the after pen is going to last between one hundred and fifty six hours. Uh, when I did the unboxing slash first impressions with you guys, I did change the battery, and ever since I've been running with this with no issue. Overall guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review on Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 tablet third generation. Great device with a couple of flaws, lack of ports, uh, the price is extremely high, battery sucks on this machine, keyboard is excellent, active pen is excellent, but the, the battery and the lack of ports, that's what's, uh, I don't know, I, 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 those two things, I need that, I need more battery juice, and I need at least a 2.0 or 3.0, and even a 3.1 USB port right? Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.